regular meeting of the <laughs> Hubbardston <laughs> of the uh, the Hubbardston <laughs> Planning Board. Uh, planning board meetings are broadcast live and digitally recorded. This meeting is being held both in person and virtually through Zoom. Pursuant to the COVID-19 rules allowing public meetings to be conducted remotely so that board and committee members, as well as members of the public, can participate remotely. Uh, first well, on the agenda really is uh, public comments. Do we have any comments from the public that aren't on the agenda? Then we have minutes for acceptance, and the minutes for acceptance are the November 2nd, 2021 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, did everybody have a chance to take at least a quick peek at those? I did. Okay. I'd like I put a motion to accept the minutes of uh, November 20, I'm sorry, November 2nd, 2021. Here in a, a first, do we have a second? I will second. All right, here in a first and a second, how about discussion? Any amendments or changes to them? That year was 2021? Yeah, yes. We're okay. Catching up still. Very, very timely. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, we had some COVID okay. time. This, I, I understand <laughs> that, but I didn't know that, that we were going back. We're, working, we're working our way backwards. Okay. We oh, still, yeah. still got about six months in 2021 to go. Believe it or not, <laughs> we're actually in pretty decent shape as far as some of the other boards go. So we're, we're almost caught up. We will be soon. Uh, so were there any edits to those minutes? No, sir. No. All right. Uh, hearing no discussion, let's have a vote. <coughs> Schneider aye. Holman's aye. Denali aye. And the chair is aye. Uh, moving down the list, we have public hearing. So we don't need a motion to open the public hearing. I just opened that, right? Uh, I think you do. Yeah. yeah. We do need a motion. I'd like yeah. to put a motion that we open up the public yeah. hearing. Uh, I'll second that motion. Okay. Here in a first and a second. Uh, any discussion? Let's have a vote. Steiger aye. Holman's aye. Tamali aye. Monroe aye. And the public hearing is open. So we are meeting uh, for a public hearing to discuss proposed changes to the Hubbardston zoning bylaws to be considered at the annual town meeting on Tuesday, June 6. The Planning Board is proposing an article to see if the town will vote to amend the Hubbardston zoning bylaws to change all gender specific references to gender neutral references and or standardize references to the building commissioner position by replacing all the words Board of Selectmen wherever they may appear with Select Board, all the words Selectmen or select men wherever either appears to the words select board member or select board members respectively, the word chairman wherever it appears with the word chair, the words building inspector wherever they appear with the words building commissioner. Uh, the planning board is also proposing additional amendments to the Hubbardson zoning bylaws for clarity and consistency with the Massachusetts general laws. Most of these changes could be considered housekeeping items, but they still require town meeting approval. The most substantive, substantive changes involve eliminating the special permit requirements for child care facilities and commercial greenhouses as allowed uses. These changes are necessary to be in compliance with MGL Chapter 30, Section 3, which specifies that local regulations cannot require a special permit for these uses. Copies of the actual language of the proposed amendments are available for review on the town website uh, and on the planning board page, as well as PDF files. Anybody from the public is welcome to request any copies of that they would like. So that's what we have on the table. We discussed it pretty thoroughly at our, our last meeting. I think we came pretty close to an agreement before we even put this out for publication. Um, so I would like to There's multiple copies or no, it's just one. Okay. Which one more if you want? So do you think we just need to read the red lines quicker? Do you think the summary would be good enough for that? I think the summary was definitely good enough for the substitutions. Um, uh, up to you. There's nobody attending remotely. Um, would you prefer to hear <laughs> verbatim? No, you offered up that this could be read online, right? Yes. So. There's anybody has that opportunity. Okay. Any thoughts or questions on that from the board? Uh, would you like us to read the, all of the red line changes 
into the record or uh, I don't feel that's necessary. necessary. But we I don't feel either because we've discussed this numerous times and we agreed upon it. Summary would be fine from my perspective too. Excellent. So <coughs> we have read the summary. Any questions or comments from the board no, or sure. any members of the public? Because this is a public hearing, so we're here for input. I already provided my comment. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So uh, if there's no further discussion on this, then uh, do we have a motion to close the public hearing? I'll we'll make that motion. I second the motion. Hearing a first and a second. Let's have a vote. Steiger, aye. Bowman's aye. Demelia, aye. Monroe, aye. Uh, and I believe we need a vote to approve the, the proposal as read in. There must be as discussion point. Yes, uh, yeah. Uh, any any further? Well, well, we'll have discussion when the motion's made, anyways. And unless somebody really wants more discussion now, I'll make that motion. Okay. Uh, here in a first, how second, second? Second. Any additional discussion on the proposed amendments? No. All right. Let's have a vote on that. Steiger, aye. Holman's aye. Demelia, aye. Monroe, aye. All right. Well, thank you all very much. That's. Uh, as quick and uneventful as that seemed, it's not reflective of the amount of work that went into that. <laughs> uh, a little lot of work. Particularly from Mark and from uh, from Alice, like it. Mm -hmm. well, it's only been a lot of hours. Yeah, a year and a half in the making. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a it's a really boring conclusion, but we should be like cracking a bottle of champagne or something <laughs> because this, this is yeah. this is a huge step right? forward. <laughs> Well, it's a chair. That's your responsibility. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Should have brought one. It all depends what. Um, so yeah. So thank thank you all very much. This is a huge step forward, and I, I hope to see everybody out there getting folks to support it for the town meeting, because this is important that it passes, and it seems like it should without contention. But weird things happen when you go to town meetings you know sometimes. So, <sighs> moving along on the agenda, uh, we have new business. Uh, and we don't have any new business, although um, I would expect that we're going to see at least a special permit within the next month or so. Um, old business, we don't really have old business that's currently open. Administrative matters, um, the Monachusett Joint Transportation and other committee assignments. So as um, as everyone knows, I was appointed by this board to be the representative member to MRPC from Hubbardston. Uh, after going through and reading all the bylaws, I found out that, well, we don't have the authority to do that. The select board actually has to do that. So we had the select board do that. Uh, and during that conversation, it, it also came up, well, we need to be more involved with MRPC because we need more out of them. But I think the way to get there is for them to get a little more out of us and for us to do a little bit more of a leadership role in MRPC. Uh, because the commissioners are essentially uh, Glenn and Karen's bosses. So if we are actively sitting in those seats, that is certainly helpful in terms of what we're able to get out of the organization. So I wanted to make sure that we were actually filling out our seats. So we had, uh, the select board had a discussion about it last week. And uh, in that discussion, they realized that there wasn't anybody on the select board that felt comfortable stepping into that role in, uh, in order to really advocate for the town with the commission. So the town decided, instead of appointing a select board member, that they would appoint Mark as the alternate member to, uh, to MRPC. I was not the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Mark was not at the meeting. The usual suspects. <laughs> and found out about it after the fact. You, you were volunteers. <laughs> you got to include a raise. Yeah. Because when, when, no, no, <laughs> when, when nobody on the select board said, I was like, well, who else would be great? And I was like, I know somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Nate is on the commission, ex officio, as a uh, town administrator. But, uh, but I think this is going to make a big difference for us because it's going to make it a lot easier to make sure we have a voting member there and, and a voting member that knows what's going on. Okay. So I think that's going to be tremendously helpful. With awesome. that said, we also have the Monachusett uh, Joint Transportation Committee, which uh, there's two seats on. One of those seats should go to Travis. And I know Travis was attending the meetings at one point. I don't know if he still is. 
Uh, Nate's still working on sorting out some of those things. One of those seats go to us. It was previously Alice. Uh, these meetings are held during the day on like a random Wednesday once a month um, at like two o'clock in the afternoon. There, in, the thing that is important to get out of them is that grant opportunities are presented at them. Mm -hmm. So the person who goes to these meetings just has to sit there and, uh, and say, yep, that sounds like something we should do. And I think we talked about appointing Erica at one point for this. Yeah. Did we? Yes, briefly. Okay. Can we do? You can do it remotely, right? Well, and I can't remember if we appointed or if you left it out. I'm gonna think about I was that still. Think about it. Mm. Okay. I should be able to do that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that would be tremendously helpful because um, certainly one of the things that that's happening as I'm getting more involved with MRPC is it's taking up more time. Mm -hmm. So to the extent that other people can help out with the board, uh, I think it's going to pay a lot of dividends to the town for me to be more involved in the leadership at MRPC, but, um, but it's certainly going to take up bandwidth for me. So mm -hmm. getting some help with some of the other stuff is going to be a big, big help. So if, um, if you're willing to take it, if you're willing sure. to please, let sure. someone want to make a motion? I'll make that motion. So you're making a motion that we appoint Erica Dack as our representative to the MJTC, Montachusa Joint Transportation Committee. Yes, sir. I'll second it. Here in a first and a second, any discussion? Awesome, let's have a vote. Stay right. Moment's aye. Demelli, aye. <coughs> well, thank you. <coughs> thank you for stepping up for that. That's gonna be very helpful. And um, Mark, we'll need a follow up to make sure that she gets on the appropriate mailing list. I, Brad, I think manages that. Yeah. Not We'll work on that. All right. So, is your, is your Hopperston address the best one for that kind of yeah. thing? Okay. All right. So this next um, this next item, seven B, is a little bit of a sleeper. <coughs> so one of the things that's becoming apparent to me from being more active in MRPC and talking to a lot of folks is we there's kind of a golden age of local assistance grants that's about to happen and when it's over it's probably going to be over for a long time so one of the things that we need to do as as a board and as a town is we need to come up with ideas that we can put together as essentially shovel ready things even if they seem crazy or they seem like something that's really difficult or it's something that we we just don't think we've been able to take on in the past and we just need to have a list of things that are available there's a couple reasons why this is an opportunity now the first one being is MRPC is about is working to hire a full-time grant writer whose job will only be to write grants for the communities the uh, the next one <coughs> is there's still a lot of federal money that's unallocated that needs to get spent on stuff and uh, a lot of that seems like it is going to go to local aid. Mm -hmm. Now there is, <coughs> excuse me, there is a one-stop grant program, uh, and we had to just get together a couple things to um, to send out as applications. And Mark actually put together the drafts with Nate, uh, with a little bit of input for myself on them. Uh, can you just comment briefly on those couple applications? Yeah, this this stage in the process is you're you're, you're putting in an expression of interest. It's just kind of a general summary of what a full application might look like to introduce the topic, and the people at the grant uh, agencies review it and get back with you, get back to you with tips on exactly which grant you should apply for and maybe something about the content of your application. The actual applications are due at the end of May, I think. Um, so anyway, we put in two of these expressions of interest, one for remediation of the town pit, the, the lead, mm. lead contamination, soil contamination, and the other one is for a joint corridor study with Gardner at the town line on 68. Um, Gardner's water and sewer system currently extends to a little bit south of Walmart. 
Um, but there are some properties in Hubbardston in that area that with proper zoning changes <laughs> could potentially be appropriate for commercial mixed use housing type developments if if you could bring them utilities. So it's looking at the feasibility of extending the gardener system further. To How that. far? Um, roughly a half mile. It's also something where we kind of have to do the feasibility study to know how far or what, what's been reasonable or possible. Okay. And cost, yeah. So it's, basi it's basically a, a, you know, money, money to hire an engineering and planning firm to take a look at what Gardner's capacity is. Is it feasible to run a line without uh, going to heroic measures? <laughs> is there some kind of opportunity that would be attractive to both communities? That kind of thing. Okay. So, uh, quick question: are These these grants are they? Um, is the spectrum of things that they are applicable for pretty broad? Or yeah, it is. There's there's like six different flavors. Some of them, I mean, the the pit remediation one is what's called site prep, mm -hmm. getting a property ready yep. for development. Um, the second one that I talked about is a planning, infrastructure planning, planning, planning and zoning yep. grant. There are also grants for um, uh, physical brick and mortar infrastructure type projects. Mm -hmm. um, is there something related to health? And let me explain where I'm coming with this here. So. There's been enormous amounts of interest, uh, various citizen towns regarding the PFAS contaminations. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of large cities are involved in this here because of the infrastructure changes that they have to make, specifically from a filtering perspective. Our community depends pretty much 100% on well water. Yeah. And we have no idea whether or not there is a PFAS problem here in the town of Hopperson. Uh Maybe, maybe not. Uh, being able to assess any kind of impact that this town has and get a preliminary understanding as to the potential impact would be certainly something that I think might be very, very useful for us in the town uh, to, to have. Yeah. yeah, that's an interesting idea. I can, uh, I can take a look at the uh, program again and see if there's any uh, I don't know what the cost, <laughs> I do not know what the cost of testing, PFAS testing is because typically the Everybody tests their water typically for hardness and things like that using the Home Depot yeah. type of tests, which are inexpensive or even free. But a, a true lab testing like that might be a lot more costly. Oh, yeah. And yeah. <coughs> being able to do something here at the town level, uh, specifically in, co in coordination with the health department, mm -hmm. may be extremely useful. Yeah. And also, specifically with regards to the schools. Yeah, um, that's a, that's a just, I mean, the, the, the deadline on this preliminary expression of interest is tomorrow, but that's not required to file an application. You can just... Okay. Yeah. Well, I'd like to throw that one into the hat. Yeah, let me, let me see if there's a fit, possible fit there. Yeah, and it's, it's not limited to just this one-stop program. There are a bunch of other opportunities that are, are potentially opening up right. in the near future. Yeah. Um, there's also... Um, there's also some housing grants and some zoning grants in addition to DLTA that are going to be issued by MRPC too. Awesome. So there are there are lots of opportunities for over the next year, even if it seems like it's a little off the wall or a little ambitious. Getting it on the list is, is certainly helpful. So like one of the things that that I think we should get on the list is, and and I guess this deserves a little bit of background to get there is there's been some folks. Um, Marinelli property has been listed for sale, and there's been some oh, folks yep. Yep, that have reached out to the town and been like, well, uh, what can go on there? And Mark and Nate have, have uh, been meeting with some of those folks just talking about the history. But something that's come up a couple times is, well, there might need to be a little bit of zoning relief to actually do something like an open space residential development because the economics still don't work out 
over there. So there may need to be some kind of compromise zoning relief that isn't like a big departure from our standard zoning, mm -hmm. but maybe is something for an overlay or something for pulling together a larger, larger project there. I think this is a good opportunity to try to get some help with doing something over that way. Right. Because I, I think it'll be pretty popular with our constituents because there aren't a lot of people who are like, you know, we need to preserve those sand pits for future generations. Mm -hmm. It's just. The other, the other thing we need to revisit specifically with regard to that area is our aquifer favorability bylaw. Yeah. Well, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry for the aquifer favorability. Okay. Yeah. It's, um, there, there are some problems with the way it's currently written. Or maybe not problems, but we'd have to take a closer look at it. Yeah, and other ones that are already on the list are the cell bylaw and um, there was another one that needs revision. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on it now. Um, Everybody's favorite cannabis. Oh yeah, there we go, cannabis. That that's the one. Uh, a revisiting of our commercial map, uh, I think, is also warranted. Done through, done through a process that well, works with the community and does stakeholder feedback and does it specifically for a plan. Um, it's a good opportunity to get some professional help doing that. Uh, right. I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to come, this is a good opportunity for us to move into a position where we're being more of a planning board than a reacting board. Right. So I think we can really make some pretty good progress over the next year if we can get money for other people to do these things for us. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Any, any other ideas? Something regarding public safety? Oh, you bet you Nate's got that on the list. I'm <laughs> sure he does, but just in case, let's make sure that yep. they're on the list. Otherwise, because there's enormous amounts of need for it, it was just yeah, and it doesn't have to be limited to just planning. So just town projects in general for yes. Mike Saul, Five Lombard Road. Mark mentioned something about potentially or checking out the feasibility of extending public utilities from Gardner. Um, I had involvement in that in that area in the past namely sanitary sewer and water and under that jurisdiction if the services passed by your property and you were within so many feet of it you were forced to connect correct and that cost uh, caused a lot of consternation so if we go down that road make sure we're aware of that and what those implications might be for people Right. Yeah, good point. I think that was one of the points that years ago they were talking about when they did it for the school, that they were going to do a, a plant for, for the center of town and make it mandatory for everybody, and everybody okay. was concerned about that happening. Yeah. yeah. And then, I mean, that is a very common model when people do that. And it, and it was for sanitary sewer, although in special cases, even the water lines, people mm -hmm. had to connect. People had wells and they were made to use the city water. Yeah. Right. We're, uh, we're fortunate to have representation from that neighborhood on the planning board. So <laughs> I imagine we'll get some pretty good stakeholder feedback <laughs> as we look at that. <laughs> um, any, uh, anything else? And if there's other stuff that comes up over the next week or two, please send it over to me and Mark, not the entire board, so we don't commit any open meeting law violations. But, uh, but definitely to, uh, to Mark and myself, because this is, this is somewhat time sensitive. Mm. Oh, uh, also on the list is trail interconnectivity. Mark and I have been working on um, essentially a scoping document for, um, for getting some assistance from either uh, state level or from an RPO level. To, uh, to work on interconnecting our trail system better with the Quabbin towns and the Ware River watershed, which, um, which I believe to be really pretty helpful for economic development. Uh, so if there's nothing else on that, then we can move down on the list here. So matters not reasonably anticipated by chair. I did want to mention, uh, and I don't know if this is the appropriate time, but uh, Part of the CPC, 
and uh, CPC has come up with the uh, proposals for this uh, coming uh, year. So they're going to be making it into the town meeting, a lot of sort of like bookkeeping uh, type of items. Uh, in addition to this here, I did want to announce that there's not a final date for this year yet, but the CPC, <coughs> as you know, uh, we all as taxpayers uh, put in a percentage of our taxes. Uh, pay, our tax payment includes also a CPC uh, component. Um, the plan is, is this year to uh, make a fairly large uh, presentation across the multiple boards that have an impact or have been utilizing uh, some way or another CPC funds, amongst which is obviously the planning board, because we actually leveraged money some years ago for like the tax uh, purchases and also for example Habitat for Humanity. And so uh, I have volunteered. <laughs> uh, well, it's 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 not 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 volunteer in the sense that there's a lot of work. It is one day where we are going to have probably a uh, a present you know pretty much a, a, a an open presentation, and uh, where town folks can come and listen to how CPC funds are actually potentially utilized not only by the <coughs> planning board, but by other boards. Like for example, there could be things that are like parks and recreation, uh, planning board, and so forth. So I think, and I'm more than happy to participate and help in this here, so that we as a planning board who have <coughs> participated in on projects and utilized against CPC funds, uh, that we can demonstrate how uh, effective these funds have been for our uh, for the purposes of the planning board. So just giving you a heads up that that will be coming and we'll probably be uh, just asked to participate during that meeting and, uh, and, and, and present sort of factual evidence of how we, we utilize those Excellent. monies. Anything else <coughs> under a matter is not reasonably anticipated by Chair Mark, do you have anything, is there anything else we need to bring up? Uh, the other thing we need to talk about is scheduling. Um, there's been some emails and some invites because we need to have a special meeting to essentially do what we just did for um, for the revisions to the solar bylaw mm -hmm. where uh, unless a bunch of folks come out from the public which is possible because there's some people who feel passionate about this but they feel passionate about the changes we're making so I would actually expect them to be super supportive um, we definitely have some vocal voices that support what we're doing on that uh, so I would expect it to be a very short special meeting. Uh, what was the date? Wednesday, Wednesday the 29th. Wednesday the 29th. And that will also be, so as of the current moment, the, the emergency public meeting loss still exists. That's, that's the last day for it. <laughs> that's the last day for it. So if, if we do, we can still get a quorum by Zoom at that point. After that meeting, we have to have a, we can still have Zoom participation, but you have to have a quorum in the room in order to have that Zoom participation. And that's assuming the select board adopts that at their next meeting, which I'm pretty sure they're planning on doing. I haven't looked at their agenda, but it was my understanding that that was going to get on their agenda. So is, is that going to work for, for everybody? That's Wednesday the 29th? Yeah. yeah. I should be able to. Okay. Yeah, and, and I, I would expect, unless a bunch of people show up, that's probably going to be a 15, 20 minute meeting. So. Okay. I think it's important to see whether or not we can make sure that we can get to Zoom. I just mentioned to you April 5th, yep. I will not be able to be present. I know that's a very important meeting. Yeah, uh, looking down the road April 5th. Well, it isn't at this point. Okay. Yeah, well, we've been. We need to do the, it's not a public hearing, but we need to do a public meeting about the odor complaints. Mm -hmm. And we have been looking at the fifth for doing it. Um, we haven't set it as the fifth yet, though. It hasn't been finalized. We could if, if, we, if we know we're going to have a quorum. Uh, well, I guess let, let's discuss that. Do we want to set that for the fifth? We need to do it jointly with the Board of Health. And a good chunk of the Board of Health is available the 5th. Um, 
what is what are the board's thoughts on that? I am available the fifth again remotely. Remotely. Yep. And thereafter, I will not be because I'll be uh, out this last two weeks in April. Okay. I think I'm available the fifth. Should be. I look available. Hey, and Erica, you should be appointed by then. Okay. So then. Then we could schedule. And you would be able to participate remotely as long as we do have a quorum yeah, exactly. here. <laughs> and, that's, and, that's, and I'd like to be participating in this year because this was a very important subject yeah. when we were getting the special permits together. Have we uh, officially submitted Erica for the, to fill the, the empty slot to yes. the select board? Yeah, the uh, the select board did a um, they did a public notice and then they advertised for the position closing yesterday at the end of the day and uh, Erica is the only person who submitted. Okay. So, so she's all set? I'm, uh, I'm pretty confident they're going to appoint her. Okay. Are we planning on uh, upon appointment to keep the associate uh, position, uh, not, not fill it? Or what's the I think we should work to fill it as quickly as possible because it's about to be special permit season. And, and that and that's the point. So I think we need to make sure that we have candidates. Uh, yep. Line up. Yeah, we. I I talked about that with the town administrator, and he, rightfully so, didn't want to publish that before Not yet. we before we made the change with right. um, with the regular position. Also worth noting, um, what's the the deadline for pulling and submitting? Uh, <coughs> well, the deadline for pulling and submitting papers is very close. Yeah, I think the twenty seventh is pulling. I have I have it at home. Okay. All the dates that I need to. Excellent. Yeah, because you'll uh, uh, assuming you want to run for the seat you're about to be appointed to, you're going to need to do that in the next election. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. Any? It, it's online. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sure. Any other questions or scheduling matters or anything else? All right, well, how about a motion? I'll make that motion to adjourn. I'll second. Non debatable. Steiger, aye. Woman's aye. Demelia, aye. Monroe, aye. Wow, that's about a nice meeting. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Can I ask just one question?